You know, this Jags team got off to a pretty good start this year. They had big wins over the Colts, over the Chargers. They've really stuck in games against good teams like the Eagles only lost by maybe a score or two. Maybe I think it was like eight points. Yeah, eight points to the Eagles. But then they lost to the Texans, but also a fairly close game. One score against the Colts they lost, one score against the Giants. It'll be interesting to see how they play against the Broncos, but it seems like every game the Jaguars play in, uh, if they win, it's going to be huge. If they lose, it's going to be close. I don't know. They just they can't just seem to hold out and win some of these games. So uh, we're going to go ahead and rebuild them. We've got a great quarterback to work with, some really talented pieces across the team. Let's go ahead and talk about them. This video is also sponsored by Underdog. Here are my picks for today's game. Hopefully, I'm getting this video up early enough. Even if I don't, here are four picks you could choose from. I just feel pretty comfortable about these. You can use code BANGLE on Underdog. They'll match your first deposit up to $100. The link is in the top line of the description. Check it out. You'd be doing me a big favor as well. And also, you could make a little bit of money. I have Matt Gay higher on one and a half field goals made just because the Niners have a really good defense. I feel like the Rams are going to be creative enough to be able to get into scoring position. But I think that... I think that it's going to be difficult to convert regularly. Brian Robinson, higher 57 and a half. Playing the Colts, they allow uh, a decent amount of rushing yards per game. And I think that based off of Brian Robinson's production, no Carson Wentz, he's going to get more touches. Jonathan Taylor, I expect to get more touches than 10. I think he's going to go over 74 and a half. Devin Singletary pretty much has to score a touchdown to get the over here. So I don't think he's going to do that. And then if you're up early enough, I like Irv Smith against the Cardinals over yards because the Cardinals allow some of the biggest games in the league to tight ends this year. But use code BANGLE, Underdog Fantasy, $100 deposit match. Let's get back to the video. I'll do the uh, Collinsworth reverse slide here to the other side, as you can see. Uh, create save point is an option because I'm playing offline. The persisting issues plaguing online franchise continue, obviously, so our only other option other than not playing the game but this is my job yay we get to uh we get to play offline and uh it's an interesting jags team Jawan taylor has actually played pretty well in terms of uh, pass block win rate so far this season cam robinson's about average so maybe Jawan taylor is actually just the right tackle of the future he kind of got off to a rocky start I know he uh, could have been a top 10 pick, ended up falling to the second round. Jags scooped him up. But the potential has always been there for Jawan Taylor. He could be a very, very good player, but we'll have to see if he continues to develop. Brandon Sheriff is in here, obviously. He had a huge contract from the Jags in this offseason. Luke Fortner is the starting center. Ben Barch, I've talked about before, but was a tight end who ended up shifting to offensive tackle at St. John's. Think D3, maybe D2, but it doesn't particularly matter. Not Division One FBS. And ended up getting a combine invite and has worked his way into the starting lineup. Star development, good for Ben Barch. And then offensively, we're probably about a receiver one away from really being a good offense. But Christian Kirk's a solid option Marvin Jones Jr. is a solid option. Zay Jones is fine. But Travis Etienne seems like he's going to be pretty good. Obviously, James Robinson was traded in real life as well just recently. So Etienne is the true RB1, but I think it was trending that way anyway. He was playing a lot more than James Robinson. And Robinson is coming off an Achilles tear. So hate to see it. But, uh, you know, good luck to him and the Jets. And Travis Etienne will be our number one back defensively. Man. Trayvon Walker has been every bit worth the number one overall pick for the Jags this year. He's been phenomenal. I know the sack production isn't off the charts, but there's a whole lot more than sack production that's important. And he's played so well, especially for someone that I think logged less than a thousand career defensive snaps at Georgia, which is pretty wild. For perspective, you probably see about a thousand a year you know, give or take for a defensive player in the NFL and for a player to go number one overall and I think have maybe less than 900 in his college career, if I remember that stat correctly. Pretty impressive. Foye Aluakon is a pretty good player. Devin Lloyd has been phenomenal. I think it's criminal that he doesn't have star development and 
74 overall is way too low for his level of play. The rookies on this Jags defense have really been fantastic. Josh Allen, obviously quite a good player. Going to have to extend him. Devon Hamilton, um, Falorenzo Fadakasi, another kind of defensive tackle. But in this scheme, of course, defensive end. Darius Williams got brought in. Shaq Griffin's a pretty good player. Tyson Campbell has been great for the Jags. He should probably be a higher rated player. I mean, it's the 76 is just too low. We got Andre Sisco, uh, Rayshon Jenkins. Obviously, some improvements can be made, and we're going to do that in this rebuild. But there are definitely some really good young pieces to work with, no question. Josh Allen's going to get quite expensive. He's going to be very, very tough to retain, probably. Evan Ingram is in here. I don't think we even uh, talked about him very much. Former Giant. Won't say Giants legend for him. Uh, but a lot of these guys are under contract for a reasonable amount of time. Jawan Taylor, I think, we'll be able to bring back. What is our cap room? Uh, it's about 30 mil. So, you know, we should be able to bring back at least Juwan Taylor and Josh Allen. Uh... As for making trades, I don't really think I have anybody to trade. Maybe Marvin Jones Jr. Maybe. Auto-generated class has a couple of interesting positions here in the top group. Bunch of offensive tackles. There is a running back, though. Not that we would look to take him, but anytime you see a running back very high in the draft, you wonder just how good are they? Don't really know anything because it's so early, but... Uh, definitely someone to keep an eye on because this isn't a realistic rebuild. Again, I've, I've said this many times in other rebuilds. There are a ton on the channel. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to see those. And I would say that because it's not a realistic rebuild, the focus is not hype on hyper-realism. It's having fun. If there's a generational running back, I'm going to draft them. That's just what it is. If he's not generational, okay, doesn't matter. That's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll look to go a different direction, but... I just cannot avoid drafting a generational player if I see one on the board. I'm going to have to do it. So funnily enough, at the midseason mark, we are 2-5, and five, which is exactly what the Jaguars are in real life. And let's go ahead and do a scouting national focus and see what some of these players are that we're dealing with. Okay, so our area scout nationally is someone I need to change. That That's for sure. I do, however, like that the strength of the class seems to be wide receiver, because we might need one of those, for sure, if there's a good enough one. And corner, I could see myself drafting. I'm not sure it's my top need. Manny Jones does have a break tackle. What's the athleticism looking like? Great to elite strength, great to elite jumping, a stiff arm, a trucking. I mean, he looks like a tank. It'll be a really good one-two punch with ETN. Do I want to take a running back very high in the draft? Not really, but also, if he's good enough, it's going to be tough to, uh, to go a different direction for me. Now, apparently, the strength of the class is wide receiver. I'm not seeing it. Like, Taylor Aguirre looks okay. Benjamin Ogletree, only the second time I've ever seen Benjamin and not Benjamin. Oh, Texas. Hook him horns. Great to elite speed. Hold on a second. Remember Benjamin Victor of Ohio State? I think he actually uh, ended up making the Giants. There is there's something interesting about Ogletree here. Catching traffic is good. Release is good. Deep route running is good. There is potential. Deep catching I don't love. He's a deep threat type, clearly. Here's the thing. Deep catching could be like in the 70s still, which wouldn't be awful to me. It kind of depends on the complete package. Like, A, catching traffic down the board, that's cool. Good to great speed. Like, you got to figure out what type of player it is that you're going after because the archetypes on some of these guys are going to lead to a lot of really, really different attributes. Like, catching traffic could be an A for somebody, and that's great, but, you know, he might not be able to separate at all down the field especially, so... You just got to figure out what type of player you want and then, you know, adjust accordingly. Okay, in terms of negotiating with players, though, Evan Ingram, I'm probably... I'll, what does he want? $10 million for four years? No. Josh Allen needs to be re-signed. For sure. Six years, it's a lot of money, but the interest is there. We're going to offer him this. And Josh Allen, Josh Allen is back. Super long-term. 
Jawan Taylor doesn't want to come back, but I think if we offer him the right amount, I think he'll probably end up accepting. I'll give you a five-year deal, and Jawan Taylor is back long-term as well. Marvin Jones Jr. is someone that I'm probably looking to trade. I don't think we're going to look to bring him back. He's 32 years old. He's still fine. And if I'm going to trade him, I may as well trade Evan Ingram. But I haven't decided on that yet. Okay, Marvin Jones Jr. and a fifth are headed to Chicago for a second round pick back from the Bears. Obviously, they have a big need at receiver. Is Marvin Jones Jr. their answer? Yeah, probably not. But that is the trade that we're going to make happen. And Evan Ingram, I would offer him probably a one-year deal. No, I, I'm not because he's just not that important to the offense. We're going to... We're going to evaluate what's going on in the offseason. Maybe he's in the plans, but I can't commit to that right now. We'll simulate to the playoffs. I don't really think we're going to be a part of them, but there is always that chance. I'm just focused on getting to the offseason. We got to save a little bit of money. Right now, we don't really have a whole lot of wiggle room. Eventually, we'll have to pay Trevor Lawrence, which is not going to be cheap. Just had to pay Josh Allen a ton. These guys are going to get really, really expensive, so we need to capitalize while we can. We would end up going 7 and 10. So we got some good wins in the second half of the season. And our offense was actually extremely high powered. Trevor Lawrence throws for over 5,000 yards, 42 touchdowns to only 10 interceptions. His overall is only a 79. So you'd imagine that's going to jump up after XP. He might even go up to Superstar X Factor as well. So this was a fantastic year for him. I would imagine that he's going to get some MVP votes. That was a great year. ETN could have been better, only averaging 3.7 yards per carry. But I think as his, uh, his overall climbs, I think he's going to be more productive as well. I think naturally that would just make sense. Christian Kirk, extremely productive. And Evan Ingram had one of the best tight end seasons I've probably ever seen in Madden franchise. 112 catches for about 1350 yards, 8 touchdowns. I don't like 1350 yards. Like, I like it when it's 100. 1,345 yards, eight touchdowns. Zay Jones was there. I mean, that's not a bad season. Jamal Agnew is really just a return man. So it's nice that he produced anything. We're going to want to upgrade him. And then the sack production could definitely better uh, be better for this defense here. Only six and a half for Josh Allen. We just paid him all that money. Josh needs to get to the quarterback a little bit more if he's going to be making as much as he is. And then interceptions, Darius Williams with three led the team. We really didn't have any. Our defense could not have been rated very high. Bottom five, maybe. Eighth in terms of yards. So how do we have the fifth most points scored in the league and the top 10 defense? Okay, points allowed is 26th. There you go. Yeah, so basically near the bottom five in the league there. So our focus is on the offseason. Defense needs to improve. The offense played great. Maybe Evan Ingram has earned himself a contract extension. If you're going to put up 1,300 yards as a tight end, 112 catches too, hey, maybe you are a pretty big part of the offense. I just wonder if at 28 years old now and only an 81-ish overall, if he's really worth it. Now, that being said, if he goes up to superstar, it might be a different conversation. Right now, though, I don't think I'm going to retain him. Patrick Mahomes wins MVP as well as the Super Bowl, as well as Super Bowl MVP. Cooper Cup, Offensive Player of the Year. Miles Garrett, Defensive Player of the Year. Brees Hall, Rookie of the Year. Season-ending injury, devastating stuff for him. Was so great in real life. And then Malcolm Rodriguez of the Lions. Rodrigo, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Okay, 19 million left to negotiate. Evan Ingram did go up to superstar development. This is also a potential franchise tag situation. I'd give him a two-year deal, up the money a little bit. And Evan Ingram is actually back for two years. Okay, that's not bad. Still might look to upgrade tight end at some point. That really isn't bad for us. Everyone else can probably walk here. We're losing a couple tight ends, so it might be a position I look to draft down the board if there's a player, you know, worth drafting. I don't really think we have enough money to spend in free agency here. Less than 10 mil. We're going to want to have a little bit of rollover cap for the next season. So we'll probably just hold off and not sign anybody i don't think there's anyone who would be worthwhile here like there are obviously some good players you expect that jamel dean would be a great pickup dalton schultz 
you know, maybe, but we don't really need him. But yeah, we just don't have the money for it. So we're going to have to lay off for a minute and reevaluate next offseason to see if we want to spend in free agency. Until then, our focus is on the draft, and I want to check out this running back, Manny Jones, truly see how good he is. Ran 4.37, that's only good speed. Elite strength, elite jumping, we know. Um, is he generational? He's got F juke and C spin move. But I guess he could be a generational power back. I don't think I've seen that build this year. A stiff arm, A trucking, A break tackle is intriguing. And he's really fast. I don't know. There was a running back that won the Heisman though, RJ Patton. I don't really think most of these stories really do anything. Other than maybe if they have a bad story, they have normal development, that could be a thing. You know, it's kind of a shame. The linebackers in this class that I've seen so far look really, really good, but linebacker just really isn't one of our needs. I didn't even get to talk about Chad Muma, that I think is a really, really good player, and the Jaguars drafted him in the third round. So linebacker probably near the bottom of my team needs, but as far as the class goes, it seems to be near the top of where the good players are. Also very unusual, a lot of A power move defensive tackles in this class, I really don't see that. I don't know if an update changed things, because usually you'd see the A finesse move power, or excuse me, A finesse move rushers down the board at defensive tackle, but I'm seeing a lot of A power move. Just a little unusual, but I'm not complaining. I mean, round two to three, getting elite speed with A power moves. Very intriguing. Yeah, here are the A finesse moves, guys. Ooh, run stopper archetype with A finesse moves? F power moves is concerning for sure. I don't know, there's definitely value in this class. Okay, look at this tight end. Now, I get that he ran 461, the ninth fastest time at the combine. They give him elite speed in the ratings, which is something I trust more than the actual 40 time at the combine. Elite acceleration, elite agility, great change of direction, elite jumping, elite speed. Elton Baber, A catch in traffic, A awareness. I might end up taking a tight end here. And then there's Tyson Money, elite acceleration, elite agility, elite speed, ran 4-5-1. That was the third fastest time. A catching, A spectacular catch, B medium route running, A pass blocking, and his last name is Money. This might be the best tight end class I've ever seen. Or, alternatively, another, like, freak at tight end. Alternatively, they're all just not very good. So, A, catch in traffic. They, well, maybe they all have bad catch in traffic. So, A is just, you know, um, not actually very good. Because I think it's compared to the rest of the class. Uh, Roman Becton here has elite everything as well, pretty much. Elite or great. I mean, I don't. what do you even do with this tight end class? These players look incredible. Morgan McQueen. I mean, elite almost everything. A deep route running, A short, A spec catch, A awareness. Okay, Morgan McQueen. How do we not take him down the board? Dude, every tight end I click on is an elite athlete. This is the first one who's not. And he's round three to four. Hudson Schwartz down the board, A catch in traffic, A pass block, A short route running, B medium route running, B spectacular catch. I mean, I, dude, I gotta see these tight ends. I honestly think it's like exceptional bait. I'm sure they're just not very good. Here we have elite acceleration, agility, and speed for a receiver, ran 4-2-4. A lot of elite athletes in this class. We'll see what happens. I don't even know what to do. The private workouts, I'm doing uh, the running back that I'm interested in. I got to choose one of these tight ends, surely. Elton Baber, maybe uh, Tyson Money as well. I mean, <laughs> they all look incredible. It's, it's, take your pick. I don't know what to do. I'm sure it's bait. It's got to be bait. There's no way they're all just like 76 or 77 plus. They're surely all just like 73, 74 overall, which isn't bad, but it's not you know, unbelievable. So the running back does have a ball carrier vision, a break tackle, a carrying. We know I, good speed to me at four three seven. You don't know what good means. That is exceptional running back speed. 
A ball carry vision, break tackle, carrying, stiff arm, trucking. Juke and spin are bad. This guy, he's going to be a freak, man. He's going to be so good. How crazy do I get? He had 34 reps at 225. I'm trading up. Actually, I'm probably not. Seahawks take a quarterback. Bears go with the left tackle. Maybe I'll trade up with the Lions. I know it's like, why would I take... Why would I take a running back? Because it could be fun. <laughs> That's all I got for you. It could be fun. I know they have DeAndre Swift. They also have two top five picks. And... We have the number one overall projected pick next year. We get a little bit crazy here. Let's do it. All right. Okay, number 10 this year. A first round next year. A third this year. No, the third's next year, actually. For number three and number five. I may trade down uh, for number five. Definitely potential that that happens for sure. I'd like to shed some salary as well, but I'm taking the running back just because it seems fun to me that this dude could be an actual tank running back. I'm not sure he's generational. But I don't think I've seen a running back with this type of strength in the draft ever. Plus, a stiff arm, a trucking, a carrying, a break tackle, a ball carrier vision. Awareness is at least a B. Here he is. Manny Jones. He's got 88 strength. Have I ever seen that for a running back? I don't think so. 92 speed, 86 jumping, 80 change of direction is not even too bad. 89 agility is pretty high. 92 acceleration. Here's, here's a test. Here's the test we're going to run. What is the highest running back strength in the league? Dude reminds me of like, um, not, I mean, Kristen Michael was pretty ripped. Who was the Seahawks running back that had just like cannons for arms? Oh my goodness. How can I not remember his name? It was not Kristen Michael, who was also strong, uh, but it was um, not Thomas Rawls. His face is in my head. It, there's a B in there maybe. I know that's not helpful. Ah, I got to look it up. Robert Turbin. I got it. I got it. Turbin. Robert Turbin. Uh, as I was typing it in, I typed 2015 Seahawks. Was he even on this team? Kristen Michael was. Uh, Robert Turbin was not, as far as I can tell. But it is Robert Turbin. Took me a minute to come up with that. Yeah, he was absolutely jacked. He was on the Seahawks 2012 to 2014. Let me show you a picture. This is Robert Turbin. Okay, well, can we get the picture to load in in better quality? I mean, you can see them. They take up the entire screen. Don't need good quality for that. But yeah, he was, uh, he had large arms. Anyway, the highest strength at running back in the league is 88. Derrick Henry has it. Chubb has 86. Josh Jacobs, 86. Samaj P. Ryan has 85. So 88 is tied for the best in the league. That feels pretty good. Here I am at number five. Didn't really check out any of the edge rushers. This was an interesting draft strategy of just take whoever looks awesome. Evan Bruce is a speed rusher with B to D finesse moves, A to C power moves. Not going to take a shot on that. So it's a shame to get a guy like Elton Baber at only 95%. We can't see his true talent, but he obviously looks really good. It's just so interesting to see elite speed and he ran... Not even a top 10 fastest tight end time. But there are also so many good tight ends in this class that I don't necessarily have to take one here. I can try and do some sort of trade down. I can move one down with the Seahawks here and get their third round pick next year. So I think I might do that. Actually, Texans pick at number 9 and 24. I could get a little bit wild here. Um, this probably won't go through, but I can I can make something happen. Maybe add a third. This is not going to go through either. Okay, we are trading number five, number 42, number 74, or number nine, number 24, and a fourth round pick next year from the Texans. Get a little bit of cap room from, uh, from doing that as there's a higher associated salary with the very top of the draft board. So uh, Baber's still on the board. I'm not convinced I have to draft him, but he is still available here at number nine. It's just tough because there are a lot of really good looking tight ends in this class. Here's another one. Tyson Money looks, I mean, maybe even better. Ran faster, but it says elite speed for both of them. Um, I mean, which one do you take? Do you, or do you take a tight end down the board? The talent at the position is just so incredible in this draft. I don't know who to take. 
I really don't know. Eagles are offering me number 15 and a second round pick next year to move down. So I'm going to move down again. I just don't need to take a tight end top 10, especially when the entire class is so just chock full of them. Faber ends up going to the commanders. He might be the best one. Money goes the next pick. I just don't need to take a tight end that high when there are really good ones down the board. Bengals are going to offer me two first round picks for number 15. I know a lot of trading, a lot of trading in this first draft, but I get a first rounder this year and next year. They're projected to be good again. We'll have to see. But basically, we move down uh, to the back end of the first. They take a defensive tackle. There are just too many good tight ends to take one uh, so high. And we did sign Evan Ingram. Still going to probably end up drafting a tight end. But uh, we're good. We pick here in a couple picks. There goes Roman Becton, who I was really going to highly consider at number 24. Ernest Childs is interesting, too. He had a draft story about him, that he was the best safety in the league or best safety in college football. A hit power, B tackle. He's a little slow, but he's also 6'2", 220. I know, surprise, another trade. I'm trading number 24 for the Patriots first round pick next year. Uh, I think I was going to take Roman Becton at 24, but the fact that he's not available means I'll just move down. And I think now is probably when I'll start uh, drafting players. Tevin Moss is still available, but I think I would probably take the receiver Taylor Bolden over him. Because I want to take the tight end down the board in Morgan McQueen. He just might be the best of the bunch. We don't know catching traffic or catching, but a deep route running. Elite everything for the most part. So a spectacular catch. Uh, awareness, short route running, deep route running. Seems good. Seems like a spectacular player. I'm going to go Taylor Bolden. C catching traffic, D catching, not good. B deep route running, good. C release. Ran 4-2-4. And he has elite agility as well. I think there's a role for him. This is like if Jamal Agnew was better, hopefully. Medium route running is not good either. But I'm taking a chance on the athlete. And hopefully it works out well. He's got 99 speed. That's a good start. 97 acceleration. 96 agility. 91 change of direction. 87 jumping. Only 5'8", 191. But with 99 speed, you like to think that we have something here at least. Tevin Moss goes to the Packers, the next pick. I had the choice between the two. I, I said we'll take the tight ends down the board. And I think in, in order for him to be available, we don't pick again until the fourth round. So unless I trade up, we're not going to get a chance to take him. But Morgan McQueen, elite acceleration and agility and speed and strength with good change of direction and great jumping. Skills-wise, looks awesome. We're going to take him. Hidden Dev, 87 speed, 91 acceleration, 87 agility. Strength is 78, change of direction is good, jumping okay. And we know the attributes should be pretty good as well. So I'm a big fan of that. And we might have to trade up. There's a chance I simulate to the fourth round and all the players I want are gone. But I don't know, it's been a it's been a weird draft. We've done a really good job getting picks for next year. Maybe package a few fours and move up for a third. Maybe try to get a second. All right, three fours for number 66 from the Bears. We move up uh, quite a bit. I think that's going to be worth it. We'll reevaluate when we see who's available. And we need more depth at tight end, too. We lost two to free agency. So it's just, do I want Will Epstein, who looks quite good, a short route running and catching traffic? The rest leaves a bit to be desired, but he's 275 pounds. Okay, and then Hudson Schwartz, A, catch in traffic. Slightly better athlete, A, short route running, A, pass block. I kind of want the 275-pound tight end because I think he's going to be a better blocker. Possession style, he's 275 at tight end. Has hidden dev, 85 speed, 79 strength. Acceleration's pretty good. 275. Six foot three. Dude is a tech. Draft recap is going to be crazy. I have no idea what to expect, really. But Manny Jones is an 81. Don't know if that means he's generational, but he looks really good. 89 stiff arm. We already know the uh, athletic stuff. 92 carrying is really high. 83 or 84 ball carrier vision. 83 trucking. Definitely something here. I know it's like, why would you take a running back? But I think we got a little thunder and lightning going on. 
Taylor Bolden is a 75. Not too bad. 99 speed, 97 acceleration. Deep route running is great. Short route running is not bad. Agility is a 96. Change of direction is pretty good. We're going to get him involved. Spectacular catch is also pretty good for him. So I'm pretty happy about that pick. Morgan McQueen and Will Epstein are both 74 overalls. McQueen... Really, he's a possession style. Or no, no, he's vertical threat. My bad. Uh, at 74. Uh, has all the traits you'd want. Looks really solid. Looks real good. Not much of a blocker. I expect Will Epstein is a blocker. Let's see here. 64 blocking. He's got a 65 run block, though. I think that's pretty good. Catching traffic's fine. Really good third tight end. All right, let's see the players he missed out on. So Silas is a 77. Looked at him. Lifton Blue, who I had on my board, was a 77, but couldn't take a, uh, a tight end. George Given, 76. Let's see where these tight ends are. So Elton Baber is a 76, was the highest of the group. Only normal development. Looks good. 85 catching's real high, but I'm comfortable with the player we took. Alex Curtis. See, I, I told you this was a great tight end class. Third rounder, also a 76 overall. Roman Becton, who I was going to take, normal dev at 75 overall. He was just the fastest, so I thought we'd have something there, but I still think we did better with our tight end despite the overall. RV Ruggs was a linebacker I looked at, but again, didn't really need him, but Texas and, you know, 89 speed, 89 acceleration. He looks pretty awesome, and for the middle of the second round, obviously great value. He has star dev. So Jones is the highest overall on the team. They're both 81, but he's playing up with morale. Christian Kirk got superstar dev. Okay, Bolden's going to be wide receiver two. Trevor Lawrence did go up to superstar X Factor as well. And then defensively, no change for Devin Lloyd. We did get a star dev player down the board, but we're going to have to start Roy Roberts and Harris. Listen, sometimes... As much as I would like to upgrade on some of these positions, we just don't have the option to. So I think uh, I think I just wanted to take best player available. It's what we did. It was an interesting draft. I'm sure not everyone are, you know, is going to love it, but I, I feel like it worked out pretty well for us. What I do need to do, though, is get a new group of scouts. That's for sure. Got a receiver named Willie Johnson. Couple different ways to say penis there. A lot of DNs in this class. We're gonna uh, hire a DN and outside linebacker, three star scout for sure. Yeah, DN, D tackle looks pretty good. So this will be the team that we go with. I've got decently high hopes for them. Yeah, it's not gonna be a one year rebuild, obviously. There's still quite a few holes on this team. And part of that is the way I drafted, surely. But uh, I like where we are. I think we got a lot of talent. And hopefully we find the results here in year two. We are 4-2 this time at the midseason mark, doing quite well, I would say. National focus position, I guess we're going to do defensive end, clearly, I would say that seems to be the correct decision, and it looks like we'll probably end up drafting one as well. That being said, though, I have not actually checked out to see what those guys look like, so things could change. I probably want to bring back Shaq Griffin, Devon Hamilton, yes. The rest, Ben Barch, maybe, yeah. Hey, LeVon Chase on, no. Jamal Agnew, probably not. We're really, we're really thin on cap space. Shaquille Griffin is back, though. Devon Hamilton's not considering shorter deals. Well, I offered you two more years than you wanted. I, w I offered you double what you wanted in terms of years, so don't really understand that. Five-year deal for Ben Barch. We are really, really thin on cap space. Cam Robinson's contract. Cam Robinson's contract is the one that needs to go. Fola Fadakasi is not great. Rayshon Jenkins not great. I don't really want to cut them, though. The penalty is too much. We just have to uh, keep on trucking, I guess. We didn't make the playoffs. Offense regressed a little bit, but our defense got a little bit better. How did Trevor Lawrence do? The numbers are way down except for touchdowns. So just the yards, really. Rushing. Manny Jones, 14 touchdowns. The yards per carry for my, both my backs really are not great. And he only has star development. Not great either, but the attributes are. He looks, 
He looks phenomenal, obviously. Uh, obviously. Uh, receiving, Evan Ingram led our team in catches and yards and touchdowns. 16 touchdowns. Evan Ingram seems unstoppable. Christian Kirk was great. Zay Jones was really good. Playing or producing more than Taylor Bolden, whose development trait is also star. He's developing, though. And then defensively, Devin Lloyd had 125 tackles, 7 for loss, and a sack. Trayvon Walker, 10 and a half sacks, 18 for loss. Josh Allen was great, somewhat. Uh, we need more sacks, though. We need, we need our defense to step up in general, but not a bad year, too. We win nine games. We're getting better, and uh, hopefully we continue to just win more and more games every season. Year three could be a good one. We need a good offseason, but no free agency to work with. So we got to figure out how to do this. Falcons end up beating the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow wins MVP. Desmond Ritter, Super Bowl MVP, though. Zeke, Offensive Player of the Year. TJ Watt, Defensive Player of the Year. And then Terrell Silas, the receiver for the Seahawks, wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Matt Farrell of the Cowboys, Defensive Rookie of the Year. 4.51 million. Uh, Devon Hamilton will end up coming back. It's It's got to be glitched like everything is in this game. Give him a three-year deal. Money's a little bit more than I would want, but he's good. Got to keep him around. And now, because of some of our associated draft picks, I would presume, our salary cap has gone negative. So, obviously, you can't have negative uh, salary cap. So, the way that happens is when the contract value changes. So, it's now going to be accounting for our draft picks as well as... The salary is going into the new league year. So it's 2024 value now. Uh, geez, or I don't know. How do we save money? Yeah, Cam Myers down the board is probably the one here. Looks like a really good athlete. A awareness, B block shed, B play rec, A power moves, A tackle. I like that a lot. Not one of the top looking uh, guys in the class based on ranking, but based on everything else i think he could be the highest rated uh, defensive end of the group i also like desmond sharper here he doesn't look too bad there seems to be some good value down the board especially on the offensive line like a guard with a pass protector or uh, as a pass protector archetype with with b run blocking seems quite good round two to three on him there is good value we just have to make the right picks so we do have a top 10 pick and we have multiple first round picks you guys are gonna be shocked by this definitely considering trading down because it reduces the uh value associated with the draft pick i did my um my focus player scouting on these three left ends or actually one's a right end all round one talent so none top five overall in the class but all definitely very good players and you can see they're at the end of the first round and then into the second or third. So we don't really have to take these guys very high. And with our top 10 pick, we can afford to trade down. I could take a chance on one of these guys, but we just don't know enough. Because we could take a stud edge rusher who really just gets after it. A finesse moves, but he's got D block shed. Can't really do much else. Like could be good, but is not well-rounded. If I was going to take anybody like that, it'd be Al Durant. Great speed. Great a lot. Elite acceleration. A awareness. A finesse moves. B tackle. B play rec. Block shedding to C. Let's do it. Only normal development for Al Durant. That's tough. End of the first round. One of those players will still be available. So I didn't really feel like we needed to move up or anything. And they actually all are available. So now we have a decision. We have the run stopper type in Desmond Sharper who would fit the system. But Cam Myers to me seems like the best, most well-rounded player. He's going to be my pick. He also has normal development. Doesn't mean he's bad, but it is ugly. Middle of round two, we're going to take Danny Robbins. I'm going to keep shooting uh, and trying to hit on one of these defensive ends. He seems like a steal. Hopefully he's really good. And he does have hidden dev. Also 89 strength, 82 speed. That's going to work out really well on my defensive line. He's going to start probably at defensive end. I would prefer to start him because of the... The development trait 
even if he's not as good as the other defensive tackles or defensive ends that we took. Go with Christian Dockery here, strong safety, good depth at the very least. 91 speed, run support safety, only normal development, but a tackle, I like that a lot. And all of the offensive linemen that I was looking at are gone here in the third round, so that kind of sucks. We'll get a third next year from Atlanta. Draft recap. Okay, so we've actually, we've done, we've done really well. Al Durant's is 74. That's not great. Cam Myers is 75. I, I said 74 is not great. 75 is only one higher, and I'm like, that's pretty good. I don't know. Feels like it is, though. He's okay, for sure. But 76 in the middle of round two, that's the value. 6'4", 265, going to work out really well on our defensive line. 82 speed, 79 power moves. Block shedding's playing up, but the strength is so high. I think he's going to end up being pretty good for us. And Christian Dockery is a 75 overall as well. Probably will start him over Rayshon Jenkins. Good hit power, good tackle, great pursuit, acceleration. Coverage could be a little bit better, but he'll develop. And there was an 83 overall running back in this draft. He's not Cheeks, despite his last name. He's an 83 overall. 5'8", 203 with 97 speed. 93 acceleration, 90 agility, and carrying. Juke's pretty high. Change of direction's pretty high. 83 overall is really high, but it might not be generational for the running back position, but I wouldn't be shocked if he had superstar X-Factor. But he only has star, so yeah, not generational. Evan Ingram is up to superstar X-Factor. Epstein has star. McQueen has superstar. Also, we got Paul Wooden in this draft class. 71 overall does have hidden dev. Doesn't really do much well, but he is really strong. 6'1", 343. Okay. Jack Griffin is up to superstar dev. What can we do here? I really would love to get rid of Folo Fatakasi. He's just not gonna start for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna trade him. I'd love an offensive lineman. Falcons have a left guard named Howie Garfield. He's a 78 overall, probably star dev based off them not wanting to trade him. I'll give you a third round pick. That's not going to go through. I'll have to add in a fifth, but that will go through surely, and it does. So we should have a spot for him on our offensive line. Just where is it? Probably center. He can't run block. Can't run block at all, but he'll play center. So Myers and Robbins will start. Wooden is good depth. I like the way the defense looks. I really do. We just uh, just got to perform now. I think I might change the playbook, though. Walker, Allen will be rush ends. I think Robbins probably over Myers. Uh, Chad Muma has star dev, by the way. Over Devin Lloyd. We'll simulate to the midseason mark, see how we're doing. Going to stay in the same playbooks for now. There's been a lot of variance year to year. We just hope we'll be a little bit more consistent. But this... This really could be a playoff team. Nope, we're back to going two and five. Offense is suddenly ranked 30th in the league. Defense is 21st. Uh, I guess Folo Fadakasi was the glue holding this team together, despite having now a superstar X-Factor quarterback. Um, I think they reordered my depth chart again. Oh, gosh. How do we not know Robin's dev trait? He's not playing. I swear they moved him from rush, from rush to tackle. I swear they did. Unbelievable. After this season, we'll see what the good playbooks are for our team. I want to stick in a 3-4, but uh, I need a good 3-4 defense. So we'll see who's really playing well in this simulation. And then the offense, I'll probably end up just going to Kansas City. Like usual, seems to be the play. They're just always so good in sim. 4-13, and 13, we were one of the worst teams in the league. 31st offense, which it, it has not been, obviously. We didn't get worse on offense. We only got better. And then... Uh, defensive points per game was 15th. We're going to make some changes. There's there's nothing more to it than that. Oftentimes in simulation, you are completely bound by your playbook. Trevor Lawrence really took a step back offensively, unfortunately. Rushing. We still don't have a good rushing attack with these two, and it's devastating. Why are you guys so bad? Oh, that's right. It's the playbook. Evan Ingram took a big step back. And then defensively, Looks like we're getting a little bit more sack production here, though. So, silver lining, I guess. More defensive, uh, force turnovers. Okay. We're gonna have a big year. Big year coming up. I hope. I'm gonna try a Giants defense for the first time. 
They were really good this past year in simulation. Of course, I'm going KC offense. It's tried and true. And now we have 146 million in cap room. Now we do have players we need to bring back for sure. Sheriff, potentially. Evan Ingram, who's now a superstar X-Factor. Uh, Andrew Mevis, no. But Lawrence, who doesn't want to come back. ETN, who doesn't want to come back. A lot of big aging free agents here. Andre Sisko is going to test free agency. You were interested. I gave you more. Okay. We might bring him back anyway. So everyone right of him is going to be gone. Cam Robinson, no. Tyson Campbell, I need to bring back. He is back. Darius Williams is 32. Aluakon, I mean, we, we could go Muma, Devin Lloyd. Don't really need him. ETN I'd like to keep. I have the money for it. Travis Etienne is back, but Trevor Lawrence is going to be the real interesting one. He's an 87 overall. How expensive does that get? It gets really expensive, actually. And I'm going to have to overpay him because he doesn't want to be here. So it's tough, but we got to do it. He's going to test free agency. I'm probably going to franchise tag him. It's 50 million. Ingram can go. Sheriff is going to be like uh, 11 million is not too bad. Give him a little over 12. Sheriff is back. We have 126 million. I have to franchise tag Trevor Lawrence. Has to be done. Still 74 million in free agency to spend. And we're going to spend a good chunk of that, I think. Okay, so what do we need in free agency? Receiver. Tackle. Slash uh, interior offensive lineman. And then defensively, Devin Lloyd up to star. Dev, Robbins had star. We'd use a defensive end. Corner could use a safety. I am targeting Andre Sisco, Deion Dawkins, Evan McPherson, I need a kicker, and Jalen Waddell. So that solves a few of those needs. Still would need interior offensive linemen. Uh, we still have money. The interior defensive linemen, um, I don't love. So we're kind of stuck with what we have. Maybe bring Andrew Norwell back for a year or two. Looks like he's going to be pretty cheap, so... Yeah, let's try and get him, and we'll see what happens. We're in a good spot for Waddle. Uh, we really are in a good spot for everyone except for Deion Dawkins, but I kind of offered as much as I could on him. Waddle, still on the board. Cardinals and Bears now going to be going after him in a big way. We got Andrew Norwell, welcome back. Andre Sisko, welcome back. Evan McPherson, welcome. And now we're going to have to offer a little bit more money to Jalen Waddle, which I have no problem doing. We're going for it. We're going for it. Big time. And Jalen Waddell, welcome to Jacksonville. We also bring Eric Stokes to Jacksonville, reuniting the Georgia cornerback duo. Uh, Stokes and Tyson Campbell were teammates at uh, Georgia. And actually, now that I'm, I think about it, we brought in Jalen Waddell as well. And I remember watching Jalen Waddell torch Tyson Campbell. I think it was on a switch release on the left side of the field. Alabama was... Uh, in, probably inside their own 20. And uh, I think I, I talked about that in my Jalen Waddell uh, breakdown video, why I thought he was the best receiver of his draft class. Kind of a fun video for those of you who may not know about it. Uh, if you care, that is a thing. He's played pretty well. So going into the draft, what do we need? We need a tackle. Could use a third tight end for depth. Uh, but we're pretty much good there. Receiver could use a fourth. And then defensively, a uh, corner, maybe. Kind of just the best player available uh, situation. Punter and kicker are good. But yeah, best player available, I think, is how we're going to operate at, you know, one of those positions that I just named. Still have $33 million in available salary cap. You know, the Jags usually are a team that spends big money in free agency when they're able to because, you know, they are in a big cycle of, uh, being terrible and they have to overspend to get anybody to come to Jacksonville and they end up offering these huge deals. Happens a lot. Quarterback's fine. There are a lot of quarterbacks at the top of the board though. It's not what we need. It's not what we need. And we do actually have the number two overall pick. So we're, we're in a pretty good spot. I used my focus points on these three players. Jermaine Watts kind of looks like some of the defensive ends that we've seen. B block shed, A power moves, B tackle. Uh, definitely a good player, no question. Is he worth taking? 
period? Maybe not. I think Ben Walter will ultimately be my guy here. Uh, he's a power guy with decent enough pass block, A awareness, A impact block. He should be throwing guys around. Elite strength. I actually think he's going to be pretty good. Round one projection. Am I going to take him at number two overall? I prefer not to. Really would prefer not to. As he's supposed to go at number nine-ish. So if I could trade down to maybe number four, maybe Saints or Jets are going to offer me something for the pick. I'd like to move down just a little bit. Try to get some more value and then maybe turn that into some type of superstar player. At this point, we have to do something to ignite this team. And a team trading up for a quarterback like you'd figure the Saints would be, uh, would be nice. Saints want to offer me number four and only a second next year. See, that's the type of stuff I would offer in order to get the number two overall pick. Now, I'm willing to trade with the Saints, but not on those terms. They need a quarterback. They're looking for their franchise QB. It's their number one need. You're not giving me a second round pick and a sixth to move up to take them. It's going to be a lot more than that. Okay, we're actually making a bit of a blockbuster trade here. A lot of stuff is happening. We're moving down from two to four. I'm trading a second number 34. I'm trading a first next year. I'm getting number four back, of course. And Ryan Ramchek. I figure why draft a tackle at that spot when I can just pick up one of the best in the league? Figured that was a slightly better move for us. I could still, I could still definitely draft that tackle I was talking about. Probably will have hidden dev. And then I could trade Juwan Taylor. Could do that. We're getting a little bit crazy in this rebuild. Feels like old times in a way. I need a big time difference maker. I need I need a really good defensive lineman. The Saints take a defensive end? Uh, why would they not go quarterback? They're crazy. I feel like Mel Kuyper Jr. Uh, in the 94 draft with the Colts. Trent Dilfer is on the board. I'm trading the number four overall pick straight up for Chase Young. Commander's bad. Jaguar, wanna be good. Let's do it. <laughs> Round three, I'm looking for depth uh, at the wide receiver position probably with this pick. Not for a fact, but I'd like to. Let's go with Manuel Elias here. Manuel, excuse me, Manuel. Uh, that's Manuel from Bethune-Cookman. Ooh, Dylan Ballantyne looks good. Oh. Only F catch in traffic, F catch, F deep route running, F release. Is he good at anything? Not an athlete. Ooh, just, just a terrible player, really. Yeah, okay. F spectacular catch. Might be one of the worst players I've ever seen. A run blocking for a vertical threat tight end. Sign me up. That is my third tight end. I'm in. Not too bad. Elias is a 71 overall. That's fine for a fourth tight end. The tight end, or should be a fourth receiver. The tight end is bad, but he's our third. Uh, another running back. That's fine. Now, I'm interested to see on the players we passed up on. They might have been pretty good. Steve Cooper's a 78. QB1 was good. And I guess they made a good decision, those teams moving up, on uh, passing on those QBs because they weren't phenomenal by any means. The right tackle I was going to draft is a 73, which isn't bad for a tackle. Uh, the tackle overalls are just always lower, so you can get a really good one, and they can uh, they can still be a low overall. He only has star dev, though. We definitely made the right decision. A real win-now move, but I think it makes us a lot better. Also, Shaquille Griffin goes up to Superstar X-Factor as well. It's a really interesting thing going on here. I think we'll have Young and Allen as a rush ends. Now, Trayvon Walker consistently moved inside to be a rush D tackle at Georgia. Do I want to do that on my team? I think yes. So this is the team. Really happy with how it looks. Offensively, I think we should be really good this year. And then defensively, that's a great group. Trayvon Walker, I moved down. Scheme fit there. Also, Chase Young has moved. Scheme fit there. And that sets up specialist. So Trayvon Walker could be a rush D tackle, which he is by default. And then Chase Young, Allen off the edge. Should be a really, really tough combo for teams. Waddle will be in the slot. This is just a really good looking team. We have so much depth too. The fact that we can alternate running backs. The fact that we can alternate tight ends if we want to. Our defensive line should be awesome. Our receivers look awesome. We're going to win probably... Maybe seven games? <laughs> we'll see what happens. 
four and three at the midseason mark. Texans are 0 seven. Our offense is ranked number 19th. Our defense has been exceptional. Number two in points per game. Our offense, do we need to change things up? Where are our deficiencies? Rush yards per game is good. Passing yards per game is not good. I think we're on the right track, though. We're in an offense that really likes to air it out in terms of personnel. So I think it's just not a great first half. I think we're going to have a really good second half. And we go 10-7 and seven, sneaking into the playoffs. Colts go 10-7 and seven as well, but they do not make the playoffs. We had an 88 overall and are struggling to make the playoffs. Tennessee with an 82 overall goes 12-5. and five. Devastating stuff, but we, we, we do get in. Tennessee, number seven offense per game. Rushing was crazy. Our defense was the number one defense in the league, so I might... I might like to stick to this this format. Our offense just could not hang, but our defense was awesome. Lawrence, I don't know why he wasn't so good. Our, our running game took a step up. 17 touchdowns for Manny Jones receiving. Jalen Waddell was great. Morgan McQueen played very well. Not a lot of production from our other receivers, although eight touchdowns for Taylor Bolden's cool. And then defensively, I expect to see some big numbers. We do see it. 20 and a half sacks for Trayvon Walker. What a year. What a year. Our defense is, is keeping us in this. That's crazy production. 15 and a half for Chase Young. 14 for Josh Allen. Interceptions, four for Chase... Uh, hold on a second. Four for Chase Young? Four for Chase Young? All right. Okay, that's... Uh, all right. Not complaining. That's like Defensive Player of the Year stuff. Yeah, he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year. Walker at three. <laughs> Good stuff. Also, what we've learned from this experience, Giants playbook might be the glitch. The Chiefs also had the best offense in the league. We just suck for some reason. Why can't we throw the ball? I don't understand. Why is Trevor Lawrence selling? Offensive line, great. Receivers, great. Running backs, great. Tight end, pretty good. All right, we're gonna jump in here in the wild card. We are a plus six overall, and it feels like a 50-50 as to what's going to happen here. Tennessee on the board first, but we answer with the touchdown. It is seven all. We take the lead 14 to seven. Tennessee answer with the field goal. We score another touchdown and another it's 28 to 10. Field goal for Tennessee and another Jacksonville touchdown. Our offense seemingly unstoppable at the moment, but Tennessee fighting back in this game. Our defense holding strong though, and they can't get in the end zone. I feel like they had the football on our half of the field multiple times there in the second half and come away with zero points every time. We win in the wild card. Close game for sure, but a four touchdown, 325 yard performance by Trevor Lawrence. And what I want to see are turnovers. Two picks for Carpenter. And I want to see, did we get a ton of pressure in there as well? Two sacks for Allen, one and a half for Young. Wooden had one. Trayvon Walker with one. And then two picks for Tyson Campbell. Defense, MVPs all over the place. Going up against the Ravens, they are an 86 overall. Good team. But I think we can advance to the conference championship. Up 3-0, Ravens take the lead. Will we take it right back? It is 14-10. Now 21-10 Baltimore. We need to score some points. Anybody's game here, but we're going to go ahead and take the lead. And it's 24 all headed into the fourth quarter. 27 24. Now 34 24. A big score by Jacksonville. And we get even more points on the board. Disaster for Baltimore. Seems like they committed multiple turnovers in the fourth quarter there. And we end up winning the game as a result. What a crazy fourth quarter. Lamar Jackson threw three touchdowns. Another four touchdown output for Trevor Lawrence. A pick for Lamar Jackson. Oh, they have Oscar Cheeks. No fumbles, but three sacks for Josh Allen. This is why you get guys that can make a difference up front. Game-changing plays. Big stuff. Haven't had to jump in yet as we face the 10-7 and seven Cincinnati Bengals. They are also an 86 overall, just like the team we knocked off. Jamar Chase, not superstar X-Factor at this point. A little bit surprising, I think. But we will host... The Bengals on the water. Man, that, that orange looks really good with this lighting going on. It is my favorite color, I guess, but it's a good looking color. 
it is kind of interesting to think about how, you know, especially if you're colorblind, but not even necessarily, we all don't see colors the same way. And who's to say that, you know, my orange is the exact same as yours? It might not be, but we are up big over the Bengals, but they are fighting back in it. It's 24-17 in the fourth quarter, and the Bengals tie it up at 24. We're jumping in on offense for the first time in this playoff run. We're going to work off play action. Here we go. Lawrence with speed. We're just going to take off. Trevor Lawrence stay in bounds. I guess two-minute warning, so it didn't matter. Little run. Here's Jones. He doesn't really look as big as I thought he would look. He's having a good game, though. 18 rushes for over 100 yards, two touchdowns. And run the ball right back to him. Oh, big pancake up the middle. Cincinnati uses their first time out. We'll get Travis Etienne a touch. And that's all we needed right there. Get the first down. We're going to stay up the middle. We really only need a, uh, a field goal here. So burn the Bengals timeouts and set up a field goal. Or, of course, if we score a touchdown, that's fine, too. But... We prefer not to on this second down. I want to get close, though. We're going to get knocked in. That is not good. Leaves a lot of time on the clock. We could have probably ended it. Now we'll have to play some defense. See, it's just... I got knocked in. It's one of those things. Second and 18 after a sack. I did a little simulating. They're going to lob it up. Ball is incomplete. Looked like T. Higgins was the intended receiver. Sets up third and 18... We're getting our pass rushers going here. Chase Young, Josh Allen, Trayvon Walker, big number 44 on the inside. Burrow going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Wow. Defense all over him, and it's actually incomplete. I thought that was caught. Let's do a little zone blitz. Actually, no. We're going to use her Campbell. They're throwing deep. Good defense, but we allow a catch. Jamar Chase, huge play. But it might be one more play on the clock. They're going deep. Swat it away. It's up and incomplete. They'll get a final shot. Oh, I've allowed so many, so many Hail Marys. And this one only from 40 yards away. Get to the quarterback. They're going deep. I'm not switching on. I'm not switching on. It's incomplete. The Jaguars are going to the Super Bowl. That was dicey, but we're moving on. No touchdowns for Trevor Lawrence, his worst game of the playoffs. We don't want that in the Super Bowl. Bounce back, Trevor. Let's go. Manny Jones going to go up to a 91 overall with morale. 89 overall in general. Looks really, really good. Was he worth the pick? Yeah, maybe not. Travis Etienne would probably be in a really similar position right now. But I had to take a chance to see if I could draft a generational power back. Didn't happen on this occasion, but we're going to keep swinging. If I see a generational player, I'm drafting them. Oh, and the Giants are in the Super Bowl. Okay. Giants are an 85 overall with Nick Bosa. What a free agent signing that would be. Saquon, Evan Neal at the top. You know what we have. Chase Young going to be playing the NFC East again. Will he be matched up against Evan Neal? I think he will be. And who is this quarterback? Burn. Who is number 16? What is this Giants team? Number nine? That's Derek Cooper from Giants franchise. I am going to take a look at this Giants team because I don't recognize like half the numbers. Greg Byrne is their quarterback. He's an 82 overall. Of course, Saquon got a fullback. Brandon Ayuk. Tyler Boyd. Darius Slayton. Wondell Robinson. Okay. Tight end is Tyler Higby. How did the Giants manage to do this? Andrew Thomas, Dylan Brooks, it's a, what, Grizzlies guard? Evan Brown, Deontay Smith, young guard, Evan Neal. If Nick Bosa, Leonard Williams still here, Tristan Hill, Jared Davis, oh, no. Isaiah Simmons is number nine. Okay, that would be cool. Anthony Walker Jr., Kayvon Thibodeau, Michael Faulkner, and Adoree Jackson, Kyler Gordon, has made it. Also, Xavier McKinney and Julian Love. What an interesting Giants team. A complete overhaul, really. Really spending a lot of that money in free agency, and they're on the board first. As a result, we take the lead, though, 7-3. Now 14-3, Giants with the touchdown, but we score again 21-10. 28-10 now, and it's still in the first half. 
28-17, Giants not giving up. Now 35-17, Jaguars. Giants offense cannot capitalize. Another score for Jacksonville, and it is 38-31 despite the Giants' best efforts. The Jaguars are Super Bowl champions. Trevor Lawrence, number one overall pick. Trayvon Walker, back-to-back -back, number one overall pick. They all come up clutch, all come up big this season and in the playoffs to give us a huge victory over my favorite in real life team, but I don't care. It's a video game. Why would I care about my team losing? It's always funny to me in Giants franchise when the Giants play, uh, you know, whatever your favorite team is. And it's like, I was rooting for my favorite team to win. It's like, oh, dude, come on. <laughs> you don't have to be that big of a fan. Listen, we believe you. We're your big fan. Don't have to prove it to us by rooting for your team virtually. <laughs> anyway, uh, that is the video. Jaguars rebuild. Overwhelming success despite a slow start. But uh, yeah, let's check out the team one final time. We'll see some development trait upgrades, hopefully. This is the final group. Offensive line. I mean, we don't see any dev trait changes on offense, but just a good group. And then defensively, Superstar X Factor for Trayvon Walker, no surprise there. And for Josh Allen, Chase Young had it. Shaq Griffin had it. We have as many Superstar X Factor players as star or better on the defense. Maybe the first time, I mean, surely the first time that's ever happened for me. And it's it's close with the offense if you or if you add the defense too. Um ETN, Bolden, Jones, though. I was just talking about the starting group. Anyway, a lot of superstar X-Factors. The defense is really the reason we win that Super Bowl, despite allowing 31 points. Offense ended up playing well enough in the playoffs. That's the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.